Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first four books in the Harry Potter series. The books are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone, um, but I got the Philosopher's Stone edition. This is the UK edition. Um, the Chamber of Secrets. My brother is currently reading, that's why there's a bookmark in the book. But Chamber of Secrets. <clears throat> Prisoner of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire. Now, I own the entire series and Cursed Child, and we got these off of thriftbooks.com, so that's a really nice place to get um, used books for a decent price. Um, so, yeah. So we're just going to review all four, and then, and then when I'm done with Order of the Phoenix, I'll review that one for you guys. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first book that I'm going to review is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone in this case, by J.K. Rowling. This, none of these are copies that I've read. The only copies that I've read that I've owned, or the books that I'm going to read that I that I own is Order of the Phoenix, half the Prince, Deathly Hallows, and Cursed Child. These first four I got from the library before I owned the series. So this book is the first book in the series. And out of the ones that I've read and completed, this is my least favorite. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this book is about, but in case you don't, this book is about <clears throat> a boy named Harry Potter who is left with his aunt and uncle after his parents tragically die, and basically one day he's a swarm of letters come into the house, and he, and basically his uncle is like, okay, they're just gonna find us, and they move. Now after they move, Harry is visited by a wizard, or a giant, and basically is told that his parents died at the hands of the Dark Lord, and that Harry has been invited to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. So, he goes, meets a bunch of new people, learns more about himself, learns about what Hogwarts is, and learns a bunch of magic. Now, this book is... Good. It's very slow at points, but I read it within two days. Um, what I liked about this book, um, I liked the characters. I feel like Harry especially was really fleshed out. Um, he was definitely, he's definitely one of my favorite characters in the series. Not my favorite. That goes to Hermione Granger. But basically... Um, this book is a really, really good one. I gave this book 4.5 stars, and, um, another thing that I really liked was Hogwarts. Every time they were at Hogwarts, I just loved it. Um, another thing that I liked, pretty much my favorite thing in this entire book, was towards the end when there's all of those obstacles, and... Each of them has, like, a strength that goes with each obstacle. So, like, for Ron, it's wizard chest. For Harry, it's, like, the flying key. So, represents Quidditch. And for Hermione, there's, like, the potions. <clears throat> and he does all of that to save the stone from the person trying to steal it. And then there's this really... show. There's this showdown. The stuff that I didn't like... The first one was the showdown. I thought it was just stupid the way that he basically touched the villain and the villain, like, died. Didn't like that. Um, the... It, it was actually pretty obvious who was trying to steal the stone. If you don't know, you should read the book. It's really obvious who steals... Or who is trying to steal the stone? The Mirror of Erised said... Erised? Mirror of Erised? Was... I didn't like that. I thought that that was also really stupid. Um, 
basically the villain is defeated by a mirror. And then after he is defeated by the mirror, Harry touches the villain and he dies. I didn't like that at all. Another thing that I didn't like, Draco Malfoy. I hate him. I actually hate Dolores Umbridge more, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to book five. <clears throat> Another thing that I really, really, really liked was Neville. Neville Longbottom is definitely in top five characters. I loved his character. Same with Dumbledore. Snape is even in there. <clears throat> I just... Uh, this book I liked a lot. However... Like I said, it's not my favorite book in the series. Probably will be second to least favorite. But, yeah. So, I gave this book 4.5 stars. I do recommend it. Um, so, yes. The next review that I'm going to do, the next book, is book two, The Chamber of Secrets. This book is in my top three favorite Harry Potter books. It beat out the first one, and a lot of people think that the first one is better than Chamber of Secrets, but I don't think so. So basically, the plot of this one is that after his first year at Hogwarts, Harry goes back to his abusive family, or his abusive uncle and cousin, and um, he goes with Ron to his house because he can't take it anymore. And <clears throat> basically, when they get to school, um, after 50 years, a chamber is opened, and what is inside the chamber is a gruesome, brutal monster that is turning people to stone. I loved this book. I loved the plot. It was really mysterious, um, so some of the mysterious elements from the first book carried over into this. Um, this was really, really good. Um, things that I really, really liked about this, Aragog was a big one. The giant spiders were a big part in why I loved this book so much. I have a fear of spiders, but when I read that, it was like, it went away. I thought that they were cool. And, um, I loved Aragog. I loved that entire scene, the way that it really, like, fit together into the story. The way that they were saved by the car is something that I didn't like, though. That sort of kind of ruined the end of the scene for me. Um, another thing is F Fox the Phoenix. I love him. That is the cutest thing ever. Plus, we get to see the reproduction system of them. So, basically, they die, so they go to ashes, and then a new one is rebirthed. Um, so, basically, it's a never-ending cycle of life. With just one phoenix. Which I thought was really, really cool. Um, another thing was the Riddle Diary. That was cool. I didn't expect the diary to actually, you know, cause someone to go insane and start doing all this. Make that person open the chamber. Release the thing within the chamber. Um... I loved it. And the biggest part of why I love this book is Dobby. Dobby the House Elf is actually one of the best characters, if not my favorite character in the series. This is a picture of him. He's so cute in my opinion, especially in the movies. Um but basically, we learn that, spoilers from here on, we basically learn that in the, in the chamber, there's this giant monster called the Basilisk, and basically the Basilisk is what's turning to stone. We also learn about house elves, and that's what Dobby is. He's a house elf. He is the Malfoy's house elf, so that means that he works for Narcissa Malfoy, Lucius Malfoy, and Draco Malfoy. And basically what house elves are they're elves that help around the house or they don't help they're basically forced to do this stuff they're like slaves for families and the only way that you can free 
the house elf is with clothes. Um, so basically Dobby wears this like pillowcase type thing and um every time that um the Malfoys believe that he disobeyed them, he abuses himself. He irons his hands at one point. Thank God we don't get to see that. But when he's in Harry's house, he says something, and then he bashes his head off the wall, and he irons his hands for stopping, or trying, attempting to stop Harry to get going back to Hogwarts and failing. And basically, at the end of the book, when um, they find out, you know, who planted the diary in Ginny's bag, who did this, who did that, um... Harry gives Lucius Malfoy the diary, and he doesn't know it, but inside there's a sock, and Lucius Malfoy doesn't know that. Basically, Harry put his sock inside of the diary and gave the diary to Lucius. Lucius told Dobby to hold it, and Dobby opened the book and found a sock and ended up freeing, getting freed. And what I really liked about the end of the book was we really got to see Dobby's true powers. At first, I wasn't expecting the um, house elves to have that many powers, especially ones that will fight off other people. Um, late, uh, earlier in the book, around the first couple of chapters, uh, Dobby lifts up a pudding and drops it all over the floor, and Harry gets a warning from the Ministry of Magic saying that um, the next time that he abuses magic or uses magic as an underage wizard, then he may have a chance of being expelled. And that's the first time that we ever see something like that happen. And um, basically, at the end of the book, another part when we get to see Dobby's powers is when Lucius Malfoy goes after Harry to do something with his wand um, for freeing his house elf. And Dobby basically knocks him over, knocks Lucius over knocks a full-grown man backwards, basically lifts him off his feet and throws him, um, which I really, really enjoyed. Things that I didn't like were um, definitely the, what was it, um, the car, the flying car, I didn't really like that. The only part that I really liked was when they crashed into the Whomping Willow. That was the only part with the car that I really liked. However, when the car when the car helps him get away from Aragog, I didn't like that. Harry had his wand. Ron had his broken wand, so that wasn't going to do any use. But Harry had his wand. He could have fought off the spiders. But the car came in and was like, no, you're not going to use your wand. I'm going to save you. And basically scares away the spiders, runs a couple of them over, and they get in safe and sound. No spiders attack the car, nothing like that happens. They just get in and back off. Um, which I found really unrealistic, because if a spider, like if giant spiders, really, 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 really want to eat you, they're going to attack the car and try to get you out. But that didn't happen. Also, when they went, they went in the Forbidden Forest, and the car drove up to the basically the castle grounds and nobody saw that Hagrid's cabin is literally right there oh yeah that's another reason why I like these books Hagrid's cabin is literally right there all right felt the caretaker is walking around everywhere school grounds inside the school everywhere and he doesn't see that they sneak in and out of this I get that they have an invisibility cloak but you can't fit an entire invisibility cloak over a car, and it never explains that. So that's another thing that I didn't really like. Other than that, there's not a lot of stuff. Oh, Colin Creepy. I hate Colin Creepy. He's so annoying. All he wants to do is take pictures and all of that. So, so, so annoying. Um, ooh. And Lockhart. Gilderoy Lockhart. I don't like him. He is annoying. He has too much self-esteem. He's too confident. He's really, really cocky. I just didn't like him. So that was the... I gave this book five stars. Next up is the third book. And when the series starts getting 
bigger books. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is actually my mom's favorite Harry Potter book. So basically, this one is about Harry, after the events of the second one, goes back to his abusive aunt, uncle, and cousin's house, and basically goes back to Hogwarts. Once he's back at Hogwarts, he learns that um, an escaped convict um, from a ministry, or not a ministry, a magical, so it's called Azkaban, has escaped, and basically he finds out that Sirius Black, who was the guy that escaped, is after him. So this one has nothing to do with Voldemort. Part 2 had, like, um, teenage Voldemort come out of the diary and attack him with the basilisk. First one had Voldemort, you know, trying to kill him before Harry kills him by a touch. Um, this one didn't have anything to do with Voldemort, which I liked how it was different from the other books. Um, but Sirius Black was the main villain in the book, and he's not even a villain. Um, basically we get the best, um, Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, Professor Lupin, who we find out is uh, a werewolf, which I really enjoyed that. We learned that Scabbers was, or is, Peter Pettigrew, um, who was an animagus. Also, um, Sirius Black is an animagus. He turns into a black dog. Professor McGonagall is an animagus. She turns into a cat. And, um, what's his name? Peter Pettigrew, aka Wormtail, is a animagus. He turns into a rat. Um, we also meet Buckbeak, who is one of the best magical animals in the series, in my opinion. We also meet the Dementors, we learn about Azkaban, we learn that, um, Peter Pettigrew actually gave up, um, James and Lily Potter's, um, hiding place, and that's why Voldemort went and killed them and attempted to kill Harry, but didn't do anything except for leave a scar on him. Um, we also learn that, um, Peter Pettigrew actually works for Voldemort. He's one of the Death Eaters. Um, Death Eaters are basically people that work for the Dark Lord, a.k.a. Voldemort. Um, Sirius Black was actually convicted of murdering 13 people. Peter Pettigrew and 12 muggles or humans, like regular human beings. Um, but we also learn that that's not true, that uh, Sirius didn't actually kill those people. Um, also, we got one of the best scenes, in my opinion, when Hermione punches Malfoy. Um, loved that. Um, things that I liked... Hermione punching Malfoy, number one. Number two, more characters. The world got a little bigger with the introduction of Hogsmeade. Um, Fred and George are great as always. We also meet Cho Chang. And Cho Chang is one of my favorite characters. Easily in the top ten favorite characters. Um, we get to see more Quidditch. Like I said, Remus Lupin. Definitely one of my favorite characters, if not my f favorite. He's definitely my favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. Things that I didn't like. I can't think of anything other than um, Peter Pettigrew. I didn't really. I don't really care for Peter Pettigrew's character that much. Um, I also. I forgot to say in all these other books. I hate Uncle Verdon, Aunt Petunia, and Dudley. His cousin and his two, like, his uncle, his aunt and uncle, and his cousin, I don't like them at all. And I never have. Um, I can't remember if Dobby, I don't think Dobby was in this book. Could be wrong, though, but I don't think he was. Uh, we also, I love Hedwig and Pigwidgeon, I think that's how you say his name, and in this book, Colin Creevy is also very annoying, and his brother comes, and we learn there's this giant squid that is in the lake, which I really liked, um, 
can't think of anything else that I didn't really like about this book. This was a perfect book across the board for me. Um, the Patronus spell I loved. So, um, yeah. I do want to do a reread of the series very soon. Um, and actually, like, review them, take notes. Do that. Um, we also learned the, about the time turners. I really, really loved those. Next up. Oh, yeah, I gave that book five stars. The final review of today's video is going to be the one, the only, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, book four in the Harry Potter series. This is actually my favorite book of all time right now um definitely definitely my favorite so this one is actually about harry and he joins or he gets picked to be in the triwizard tournament which i'll get more into that later when i actually talk about the tournament this is the point where the books get bigger and starts to get really dark um so, this book isn't like other books. It starts out really differently. Um, it actually starts with someone being murdered. So, yeah. Uh, so, basically, it starts out... The first chapter is called The Riddle House. And, basically... Um, it talks about how the townspeople, or how, uh, the Riddle House, the Riddles that live in the house, so basically, young Voldemort, his dad, and his mom were murdered, or killed, or died, and then we get the first murder that we get to see, um, like, the first ever murder that we actually read about, like, not just mentioned, not just hear about, but we actually see it go on through the mind of the reader basically this guy named frank is like listening like overhearing them and basically uh he got murdered by voldemort and wormtail aka peter pettigrew and that was the opening. I really enjoyed that opening. It's definitely in top couple openings. It's this and Order of the Phoenix are my favorite openings. The entire first quarter of Prisoner of Azkaban I also really, 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 really loved. Um, when we see, like, the black dog man, which turns out to be serious, in his animal form in like the thing in the alleyway that's what they're called alleyway and the night bus i loved all of that but back to color fire so after that opening we meet harry once again and he is still you know getting over serious and you know all of this and he he, he wakes up to a scar hurting and he realizes that he was dreaming about Voldemort. But what he doesn't realize is that Voldemort, every time he sees, well, he realizes this, he knows it, but every time he's near Voldemort or he thinks about Voldemort or something, he has a scar that Voldemort left. And basically, he's connected to Voldemort in some way, and so every time he, like, thinks about him or something like that or is close to him, his scar begins to burn. Now, after he wakes up from that dream, which was our opening scene, he his scar is hurting, and he realizes that he must have been thinking about Voldemort again. And he realizes, or he thinks, that someone is going to try to resurrect Voldemort. So, about halfway through the book... Yeah, about halfway... Wait, 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 wait. About, oh, no, not halfway, about a quarter of the way through the book, we learn about, no, more than just a quarter of the way, but we learn about, or no, 
less than about a quarter of the way, we learn about the Triwizard Tournament. We learn what it is. Basically, it's when three wizards, three wizards, one wizard from each school, so there are three schools, one wizard from each, are picked to actually participate in the Triwizard Tournament, which is just three tasks that you have to complete. And the at the end, you get a Triwizard Cup for your school. I think Dumbledore said you must be in... Let's see, Cedric Diggory. I think it was you have to be from 5th year up to 7th year to participate. Um, could be wrong. It might be 6 to 7. I don't remember fully. It's been a while since I've read this. Um, but basically, Harry is chosen as the fourth wizard. The fourth champ. Um, so basically the goblet, after, you know, three names are picked, the goblet randomly shoots out Harry's name. And Harry didn't want to be in it. He didn't ask to be in it. Um, but we learn something very stunning at the end, which I'll get to. Basically, Harry... And the rest of the champions participate in it. But there's even more stuff that goes on. We meet more people from school, from the other schools. We meet Victor Crumb from Durmstrang. Or... Books that... Um, the one that comes about, I think that's Durmstrang. Basically, I think it's I think it's Victor Crumb from Doomstrike. Victor Crumb and Fleur Delacour from Books Batons. Books Batons. I don't know how to pronounce it, but we meet her and her sister. We meet Victor Crumb, and then there's Cedric Diggory and Harry. That's one of the things that I really like. We get a more of a variety of characters. The world gets bigger with the Quinn Cup. And we go under the lake and through a maze, and it was just really, really nice. About halfway through the book um, is the first task, which Harry and the rest of the champions have to face their own dragon. And Harry gets the Hungarian Horntail Dragon. So basically, he has to get a golden egg from the dragon. And he gets the egg... And gets his arms all burned up. But the egg is the clue for the second task. Now about... So after that uh, chapter the, of the Hungarian Horned Tail, Hermione comes up with this brilliant idea because she found out that there's a bunch of elves that are working for Dumbledore. Um, willingly, Dumbledore even offers pay and vacation. But they say that they don't want it. They like working. However, she finds out that Dobby and the rest of them are cooking, cleaning, working, doing all of this. And she figures out that they work on the common room. So, Hermione has the brilliant idea of um, basically knitting these different hats, mittens, socks, clothing. A bunch of these different clothes clothing items for the elves so that when they clean up the common room they get a um a thing of for freedom they get a piece of clothing which will free them and dobby just keeps taking them all so about out about a, so um after that they learn that um, the egg will, they have to solve the egg and it will tell them it's their hint for what might be happening for the second task. And once they open the egg, Harry learns that he has to open it in water so that it doesn't make this horrible screeching sound. And what is inside is a beautiful little song performed by people. And basically... He learns that it's going to be something to do with water. Now, I believe it's after that chapter, we get the Yule Ball, which I loved this chapter. Basically, Hermione goes with Victor, um, I think, 
Ron goes with Parvati Patil, and no. Harry goes with Parvati. Ron goes with someone else. I can't. I can't remember. I think that's what it is. And then Cedric goes with Cho. And Harry actually asked out Cho. And that was after Cedric, Cedric asked out Cho to the dance. And um, Hermione asked Victor. Or no, Victor asked Hermione. And then Ron asked Hermione after Victor as a last resort. And that flares up a little fight. Hagrid comes out to Madame Maxime who is the headmistress of, I think it's Books Batons, about how he's never met another half-giant in his life. He always thought that he was the only one left and everything. And that scene was really, really sad. Now, shortly after that, we get the second task, which, like I said, has something to do with more people or water. So basically, the second task, their task is to go underwater and save the thing that you love most. So for Harry, it's Ron. For Victor, it's Hermione. For Fleur, it is um, her sister. And for Cedric, I believe it was Cho Chang. And they have to get, they have to find their own way to get under and all of that. Dobby delivers um, Gillyweed for Harry, and basically Harry eats it, and he grows gills, and he can breathe underwater for a limited amount of time. Now, he saves other people, and that gives him extra points, and so he's in the lead. Um, we also learn more stuff about, like, a pensive and stuff, and then there's the third task, which is actually my favorite task. It's, they have to go through this maze to find the World Cup. First one to get there wins. Um, basically, Cedric and Harry get there together, and... They both grab onto the cup at the same time, and they are teleported. It was a port key all along, um, which basically means that you can grab that, and it'll transport you to whatever the set location is. They also used that earlier in the book, way earlier in the book, when they were going to the um, Quidditch World Cup. They used a port key, I believe in the shape of a boot, um, which teleported them there. However, somebody made the Triwizard Cup turn into a port key now where this port key takes us was a cemetery in the cemetery they see a or by they i mean harry and cedric see a hooded figure in a cloak walking towards them and harry hears a voice say kill the spare after that he hears one of the unforgivable curses of Kadavra, um being chanted yes being chanted, and Cedric falls to the ground, dead. After that, we learn that the man who killed Cedric is actually Peter Pettigrew. And what's he trying to do? Capture Harry so that he can resurrect Voldemort in Harry's blood. So basically, he gets him up, ties him to a statue, cuts his arm, takes his blood, cuts off his own hand, does all of this just to resurrect his master while Harry sits there and watches. And then there's this duel between Harry and Voldemort, and Harry gets away. Um, all the Death Eaters come. It was insane. I loved it. And then after that, he gets back. They learn that Mad-Eye Moody... Giant spoiler here. Mad-Eye Moody was actually... Barty Crouch Jr. And we learn that Barty Crouch Jr. killed Barty Crouch Sr., his dad, in the woods when Barty Crouch Sr. showed up in the woods talking about something. And he couldn't, and nobody could understand what he was talking about. They thought that he was going crazy, and then they didn't see him again. We also learned that Barty Crouch Jr. was the one who set off the dark mark in the sky at the Triwizard. Uh, not the Triwizard Tournament. The Quidditch World Cup. We learned that he framed Winky, made Barty Crouch Sr. Uh, disown Winky, so freed her. And then Winky went to work for Hogwarts. Did all of this stuff. Okay. Did all of this stuff. Just to learn that he made Polyjuice Potion, which we learn about in the second book. To take on the form of Mad-Eye Moody. And Mad-Eye Moody had been locked in a trunk that had seven layers 
for the entirety of the book. So that is nearly 800, no, that's like 740 pages where he was locked in a trunk. And then we learn, or we don't learn, but Harry tells them that, like, Voldemort has risen, all of this stuff has gone down, and that they need to be extra, extra careful, that they need to take extra measure, measures to make sure that Voldemort stays away so that Voldemort doesn't get any of them. This book is my favorite for this reason. The plot twists, the characters, the the um, the um plot itself, the entire environment, environment. Stuff that I didn't like in this book was actually nothing. I just wish that Cedric had more time. Give him, like, another book. Or give him, like, a bigger role in helping defeat Voldemort. Like, they were both equipped with wands. If only, like, Cedric would or could be, you know, there for more of a battle, I thought that that would have been nice. I gave that book 5 out of 5 stars. I just loved it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I know that this video is longer than usual. However, I will be posting another one tomorrow. Um, probably about a, probably another book review. However, I hope that you guys have a great night. Look forward to a, another Harry Potter, uh, related video. A Harry Potter movie review tomorrow as well. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!